Hey guys, Anthony here. What you see here is a sanitation and hygiene kit that I have prepared a few years ago. These are the four buckets that it's contained in. And after this video, I will attach a video I did a few years back showing you the contents of these items or of these uh, five gallon pails. In these pails contain many items to uh, get along after an SHTF uh, for basic everyday hygiene. And some of what we're going to be talking about in today's video will stress the importance of having a lot of this prior to an SHTF because getting it afterwards can mean life or death uh, for the individual in your group, your family, or what have you. So having certain items beforehand and having them neatly organized and ready to go is a very, very important part of prepping. Um, you know, next to, next to water and food, these items can mean life and death. And literally, we're going to be talking about uh, Selco from the SHTF school. And one of the modules that I listened to a few times that he talked about in his experiences during the Balkan War and some of the major items that they used and that were important to them during, an S during their one year SHTF. Um, and so I wanted to uh, just show some of this and a lot of it you'll see in the, in the video that I attached to this, uh, what is contained in these hygiene kits, these toilet bowls, uh, two of them are toilet bowls actually you could use as uh, latrines. Um, and some of the tools and things that go with them, but some very basic things that happen during an SHTF, like a, like a bad cut on your hand or an infected tooth um, or a rash between the toes and fingers or in the genital area can become very, very dangerous and can lead to other things like infection and sepsis and then also to death. So um, in this bottom bucket here, is contained a rocket stove, which would be very vital in an SHTF uh, to have, to be able to burn, to boil water, to process things, to cook, um, to disinfect um, tools, like if you were working on your teeth uh, or something like that, uh, being able to make fire and cook would be paramount. But, um, and you see a gallon of American Pride vodka here. No, I'm not gonna go drinking after the video here. But in Selco's, um, a lot of what he talks about, they used a product called Rakia, which um, I guess is very similar to vodka because I emailed him uh, when, I, um, when he was saying it and I wasn't sure what it was. And uh, he told me it was like vodka. And they used this um, not so much for drinking, although they did drink with it uh, when they needed to, but they washed their hands with it, they cleaned their genitals with it, they disinfected wounds with it. They carried it as part of their EDC kit when they went out into the field, into the rubble um, to have with them. Uh, and this was very, very important part of what they had. And so stockpiling something like vodka is not a bad idea. And that's why it's pictured here. So let's get to uh, some of the things that he talked about in his module uh, on hygiene. Uh, I just finished listening to it again. It's uh, module number 14 in the SHTF school. Um, there are some of the topics and there are some of my notes that I'm going to review. And then I'll attach the, uh, my hygiene video to show you some of what I have packed away. All right, guys, let's get right into it. In, um, in uh, number 14 of the modules, of the 30 modules in Selco's uh, SHTF school, where he's interviewed and given um, gives talks on different things regarding their experiences on what they went through uh, during his uh, year in hell, as they call it. Um, this is during the Balkan Wars in the 90s. <clears throat> um, I'll put the link to the SHTF school. I went ahead and, and bought it. I think it was $25 or something like that, where you get access to all the modules and they're posting stuff all the time now. They have a blog. Uh, in fact, there's much on here that I haven't seen yet that I need to go back and look at. But uh, in this uh, talk on hygiene and medical stuff and his EDC, 
selco talked about and i just took some quick notes here for defecating or going number two and or number one they had a latrine area near their house just outside of their house area where they actually dug a hole would go to the bathroom there keep it contained um cover it with dirt and bury it so basically that's how they uh took care of their doing number two during most of the part of that one year that they spent um living in this situation other people he says just did not care they defecated in the street garbage piled up stuff piled up so when you went out into the streets uh for a uh to look for to look for to rummage for items you would very often come upon that stench and the 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 um people going to the bathroom in the street uh what they wiped their butt with uh i don't think they had an abundance of toilet paper because he tells in the in the um in the audio log uh that they use clean rags and water and also uh rakia which is that vodka like um stuff that they drink out there uh rags were easily found they said when they went foraging in the ruins and the burned out and um buildings that were shelled uh they very often could find enough rags to use uh to wipe themselves with uh they said uh trash like he talked about trash piling up uh during normal times and how during SHTF they really didn't have too much trash because they recycled so much you know they used uh, if there was a can a tin can they made a candle with it or they used it to drink out of or to cook with um they recycled it um a lot of the stuff uh, that normally we would throw out like cardboard and and boxes and things of the, that that nature uh they would burn as fuel uh they reused jars and bottles and certain boxes uh certain small boxes they use as part of their EDC kit where they carried with them all the time uh, a lot of times this was a tin box uh it it had some type of lighting fire lighting material um batteries if they had it but they were rare uh during uh, that time uh, some type of needle or ability to make a punch or a hole in a can or something uh, a candle and then any time they went out they made sure they had tinder in order to start a fire because they never knew if they were coming back or not when they went out and they always always used a flask or carried a bottle of rakia with them so again very important product because uh, he mentions it over and over in a lot of the modules uh washing uh how often did they wash they did not wash every day when they did they cleaned themselves with a, a wet rag and washed their hands and feet with rakia uh took a bath if they could every week or 10 days and when they did that they just used a small dish or pot to dip a rag in and 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 wash themselves with um washing in the summer uh, uh, they wash more often in the summer in the winter not so often uh they made their own detergent a lot of the women made detergent using ash uh black market had many things to trade um but they needed to choose uh food first very often some common hygiene problems and again this is why I I'm posting this video again uh today uh common hygiene problems that they dealt with were skin funguses especially in the feet due to wearing dirty socks um Uh, and uh between their toes and fingers and these rashes very often became like wounds uh to them and sometimes got very serious uh they wore their shoes all the time almost he gave an example of at least 22 hours out of a day you had your shoes on so picture if you had your shoes on 22 hours a day with the same socks for 10 days that you couldn't wash what would happen to your feet especially in the summertime uh shoes wore out very quickly so uh guys uh now is the time to stockpile shoes boots and uh sneakers or heavy duty sole shoes uh to last during an SHTF cuz they wear out much more quickly during that time than they do in normal times uh, very often they would look for shoes in the rubble or sometimes taken from the dead man on the street they would take their they would take shoes off their feet what what they did with dead bodies well if somebody died in your family he said that they would bury somewhere near the home nothing fancy no funerals no religious burials just dig a hole 
and put the body in it. Very often, the stench of bodies was very, very bad in the summer months. A lot of those dead that were stuck in the, the ruins that were blown up or the rubble of buildings and houses that were never able to be recovered, those stenches permeated through the neighborhood during the hot days and nights. And they basically had to get used to those smells. And the smell of death or dead bodies, corpses, and burning stuff, people just burning stuff for fuel, permeated the air. Uh, in the winter, the bodies didn't smell as bad. Um, usually, in their group, they had one person designated as the cook, and that person, him or her, did not go out into the field and forage for things. They stayed as clean as they could. They kept control of the food and water and preparing the meals because getting a sickness from food or waterborne ailments could lead to very, very severe uh, sicknesses. Um, most stuff in the house was burned for fuel. He gave an example of all the carpets in the beginning they used for fuel. A lot of the furniture that wasn't needed, uh, they used for fuel as well. And so inside the house was kept, um, was kept clean because a lot of stuff was burned and used for fuel. Um, medical supplies. Uh, basically, he said when, when the SHTF started, uh, he had whatever he had in his drawer. So basically, he wasn't stockpiling, he wasn't a prepper prior to this event or the, the war breaking out. So he had in his drawer basically what a lot of people have, maybe some leftover antibiotics, a couple days worth, uh, some alcohol, uh, some Band-Aids, things like that, maybe some ibuprofen, some aspirin. Uh, medicine could be obtained on the black market, he did say, but it was not safe, and many times it was not worth it to go out and try to trade. Uh, trade was done usually in the town area, and usually you had to verify who you were with the person you were trading with, and it got very edgy sometimes, he said, and you needed to be careful when trading because it was hard to trust uh, people. So. Let all this sink in now because this gives a lot of reasons why to prep now and get these items in stock as much as you can now rather than to have to go out into, into the field and, and trade your SHTF and get yourself killed or robbed. Uh, very often MREs were traded for medical supplies. Um, again, uh, MREs uh, were, uh, he gave an example, if you needed 10 to 12 antibiotic pills. Uh, very often the person you were trading with could ask for five or up to 10 MREs for just one course of antibiotics. So that's how important antibiotics were in this uh, type of situation because so many people got infections from different uh, things. Um, they treated medical wounds. They didn't have an uh, anesthesia and things like that. So they basically would get the person drunk on rakia and uh, work on their wounds. Or he said they smoked uh, marijuana uh, to get high and that way they did not feel the pain as much for whatever they were being treated for. Uh, IV solutions were, were, were in demand but not as common. Obviously it was a real luxury item to get an IV solution and that was for rehydration mostly for diarrhea and vomiting. Uh, but he said IV solutions were very hard to get or to trade for almost impossible. The number one thing uh, to trade for was antibiotics. Uh, sickness from diarrhea and bad water or food led to many infections and sicknesses uh, which resulted in the deaths of many people um, because they're, they were weak to begin with and having no uh, being dehydrated uh, caused a bad, uh, very bad things to happen to them. A simple infection from, a, say, a cut, a bad cut on your hand. Say you were out foraging without gloves and going through the rubble. You cut your hand really bad. You couldn't get it treated. You didn't disinfect it enough or it needed surgical care. You know, there were ligaments or tendons exposed. Uh, that bad cut can lead to sepsis, which would lead to a blood infection, which would lead uh, to death. Uh, so. Important to have antibiotics at the beginning, he said. He stressed it. Have antibiotics at the beginning. Uh, malnutrition symptoms of people were already sick, uh, like high blood pressure or heart disease, people that had ailments already before SHTF. Uh, the malnutrition compounded itself 
and very often those people would die. Um, but very often a healthy person, he said, would very often go three every eating every only every three to four days, and they could they definitely got used to that. So eating every three or four days was commonplace uh, for them. Uh, teeth problems. Uh, there were homemade remedies he talked about for teeth did not work. They had a guy next door or down the street, I guess, where they were. If something happened with your teeth, he basically helped uh, pull the tooth, tooth, washed it out with rachia, and maybe made some concoction with an herbal tea or something, or in the rachia itself, to try to kill the, uh, the infection. But uh, teeth problems, uh, you were very much in trouble if you had teeth problems during SHPF because you, you cannot go to the dentist. So um, that's some of my notes on that and why I wanted to do this video and repost uh, my hygiene video, which shows these buckets behind me is, number one, I'm, I'm gonna add to them. I'm adding to my stock of items for hygiene, medical supplies, uh, water purification, anything to do with staying alive during SHTF and basic uh, hygienic issues are of paramount importance and it's not um, something to be taken lightly, I feel. And after listening to Selko uh, talk so much about hygiene, 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 was always, always a problem with them. Whether it was rashes breaking out, not being able to change their clothes, skin ailments, um, cuts, small cuts and scrapes and abrasions often led to worse things. So. Having these basic items on hand now will be worth their weight in gold uh, in an SHTF because, um, and again, we'll get into more details on what SHTF causes in the future here in this country can happen, uh, whether it's a natural disaster, whether it's a, a man-made disaster, whether it's a, a city being cut off by uh, an EMP or something where lights go down and you can't get basic services and you're left foraging for weeks, months, or in their case, uh, years. Um, let me know what you think, guys. Send your questions, comments. Watch the video uh, that I attach here and um, you know, re-examine your kit, your personal preps, and try to realize just how important simple little things are in an SHTF that maybe you're taking for granted now. Thanks for joining me. Anthony signing off. Stay ready. Hey guys, Anthony here, Bibles and Barbells. The video you're going to see today is a video on my sanitation or hygiene kit. And what you see here is the complete kit in four five-gallon pails. I basically put everything that I needed, or that I thought I needed, in these four buckets, which include two um, luggable loos or toilet seats that snap onto the five-gallon bucket. So I have two five-gallon buckets that are ready for uh, to actually be used as toilets, and two buckets from Home Depot. Actually, all the buckets are from Home Depot. These are new buckets that they have out with a cushioned handle. And the nice thing about these is they're calibrated on the sides in gallons on one side. And on the other side, I believe it's liters, which is very going to be very important for processing and um, processing and purifying sterilizing water in the field and then I bought these these lids these gamma lids for these two cans these are the gamma lids the gamma seal lids you can get these now in Home Depot I think they're $7.95 each a very good indispensable lid they, this ring snaps on to your five gallon or four gallon or six gallon bucket uh, your contents inside here and then a watertight nice screw top lid on top of your can. These go perfect and these cans are these white cans are see-through not totally see-through but you could see you know some of the items inside there 
Um, they're about $4.95 each, I think, at Home Depot. They're worth the price because, like I said before, the uh, calibrations on the cans, especially for sanitation. So this video is coming to you after I saw a video from Cat's Cradle, uh, a YouTube channel I'll put in the description box. She did a video a few weeks ago on her kit, and after I saw her video, I went back and looked at my sanitation readiness, my hygiene readiness, and saw that it was lacking. And so that's why the YouTube community is so great, that you, know, you learn from each other, and that's one of the reasons why um, you, know, you watch other people's videos that you subscribe to, and you get some ideas from them, and you learn from them. And so I took what I saw from her, and I kind of built this kit based on hers, and then my own personal uh, needs that I thought I needed. So we're going to lay out these buckets one at a time. I'm going to show you what's in them and how I pack them and the ideas behind it. And I'd like to get comments from everyone on uh, you know, items I have or don't have. Uh, and some, you know, so any constructive criticism would be much appreciated. And I'm sure I'll get some. Okay, so let's start out with the first one. We'll open it up and we'll go right through the contents right down to the uh, fourth one. All right, bucket number one. Here's the empty bucket, five gallon bucket lined with just a regular trash liner. You can't have enough trash liners, so I line all my buckets with them and then pack everything inside of them. Here's your luggable loo seat. This clips, this seat clips down on your bucket, and then your lid shuts down and goes on top of your bucket. So these lids are around twelve dollars. You can get them in any camping store. You can get them online. I've I've gone to the bathroom on a five-gallon bucket without these lids, and this this type of lid makes it a lot more comfortable to sit on a bucket without a lid. So you should have it. You should have at least one. I'm just going to go down the items. I'm not going to go into detail on every item, but uh, in this first bucket, you know, some deodorants, soap, a glow stick, a multifunction stick that lasts, I believe, uh, up to 200 hours. You can get these anywhere, Home Depot. Uh, Q-tips, toothbrushes, women's razors, body uh, pre-moistened uh, washcloths, a 12-pack of razors, a, a bag here with a nail clipper, some coarse fingernail files, some black electrical tape, camp matches, and then a snap glow stick, an empty bottle, which I'll tell you what I'm going to use that for in a second, two bars of dial soap, Clorox disinfecting wipes. Uh, this is a spray that uh, Cat's Cradle talked about in her video. This is a, like an industrial janitorial, janitorial spray that comes in a biohazard kit that I had, and it basically kills, you know, HIV and all those different diseases on contact. So that's in this bucket as well. Shaving cream, uh, Purell hand sanitizer, mouthwash, toothpaste. Joy dishwashing liquid, which uh, I think Joy is the best one. I've used it for years. Uh, I used to clean uh, windows, and I uh, used to use Joy in the water to clean the windows. It really cuts down grease and dirt. Very good product. A 48-ounce bottle of bleach that was in that bucket, and a 6-pound container of scented scoopable cat litter. Uh, for putting on your waist, uh, for soaking up moisture, and so that's bucket number one. And I'll pack these items back in and put bucket number two on there. Okay, now I may rearrange how these buckets are packed out at the end, but basically all these items are in my kit. All right, bucket number one is right there. Bucket number two, as you can see, is emptied. Same thing. You got the lid right down the line here. There's some redundancy in some of the items. Um, you'll see in this in, when I go down the line here. 
but some woolite for washing uh, some clothing, another battery-operated glow stick, which is also a whistle and a signal light, some more razors, shaving cream, more trash bags, a small backpack shovel for digging a latrine or digging a small hole, Gorilla Tape, which you could use for a million and one different things. A pack of different assorted combs, different sizes, different styles. Absorbent gel for bloodborne or vomit, stuff like that. You could also use the kitty litter, but there's some absorbent gel. Biohazard bags for any blood waste right here. And notice I have Ziplocs also within these products within them to keep them separated from each other when they're packed away, just in case uh, you know something breaks or falls away. It's it stays within its pack. Another glow stick, some small tea light candles, some stormproof matches uh, packed away in plastic. Fifty feet of poly cord. Uh, very important. These are toilet bags, toilet liners for the five gallon buckets. There's uh, 12 in this kit here. I just kept them in the original pack. There's some Wisp toothbrushes that have the you know the on the run toothbrush that has the toothpaste built in it. A couple little tubes of mouthwash. Some deodorants. More hand sanitizer. A box of uh, safety pins right there. This is the Coleman uh, 20 packets of tank deodorizer to put inside the uh, your uh, hygiene buckets when you when you use them for absorbing waste and odor odor removal. A bag of gloves, which I'm going to probably add more gloves. A shower curtain liner, Cat's Cradle talked about, can be used for a number of things. Uh, one of them being to make a a small enclosure. Uh, to put your toilet up and set your toilet facility up for privacy. Uh, deep Woods Off, um, down here, this is the one that kills the West Nile virus. Uh, down here in South Florida, um, basically you need this all year long if you're going to be outside. Also, that goes along with that is some SPF 50 uh, spray for sunblock. More toothbrushes, and you know, I pick these toothbrushes up when I go to the Target or to the grocery store. They come with, a, they're basically a buck. They come with a toothbrush, toothpaste, and a cap. Uh, I just pick up two or three whenever I go. The more of these that's in the kit, the better. I don't know how many people, uh, you know, you never know how many other people are going to be without a toothbrush. And so, you always want a couple extra to share. A roll of Bounty uh, paper towel. And then in this bag here, it's basically a, a five liter dry bag. And in here I have my toilet tissue, two rolls of toilet tissue and four wash rags at the top. I want to make sure my toilet tissue stays dry uh, all the time. And so that's why it's packed inside this uh, bag here and it has a little clear window. This bag could also double as a small laundry bag, you could fill it with water and clean your underwear, your socks, a shirt, a pair of shorts. Just shake it up with a little soap inside of it, and you know you could rinse out your stuff in a bucket. And so that that bag has multi uses as well as being able to carry water. And so there is bucket number two, guys. Bucket number two. Let's get ready for bucket number three. Okay, moving along, bucket number three, you can see it's open. There's the gamma lid right here. And inside bucket number three, you see two full-size folded up towels. I'm going to leave those in the bucket. And then moving down the list here, a small roll of garbage bags, just an all-purpose cloth, a zip bag with some toothpaste, mouthwash, tissues, a 3M mask, some um, ponchos, a small signal mirror, and that's it for there. 
uh, another part of the biohazard kit that I showed you earlier. A pair of gloves, some booties, a little uh, apron that you put on if you're cleaning up bloodborne waste. Again, in its own little Ziploc. This is my shower kit. It's basically one of those showers that you fill up with water. It's a five gallon bag. You lay it out in the sun for a while and you hang it from a tree or rig it up somehow. And then here's my shower kit that goes with it with the cap and the shower nozzle and with an on off spigot uh, for washing yourself out in the field. Some power cord vitally important a large figure nine with I think 10 or 12 feet of cordage to rig for a clothesline or for anything else um, a ridge line a baseball cap some soaps and, and um, body products here here's some bamboo utensils in the pack a pack of tissue to go one of those ones you buy in the camping store um, a foldable saw, wood saw, another trowel, a small aluminum one liter bottle, a magnetic set of measuring spoons from a quarter teaspoon to a tablespoon and also has the milliliter equivalent. You have one side shaped like this and the other side is circular. Shampoo, body wash, a poncho, a notepad with a pen and pencil inside the notepad, inside the, uh, this poncho kit here. And right now that is bucket number three. Let's get bucket number four. Okay guys, bucket number four. There's our first three buckets sitting back here. Bucket number four, you can see is emptied. It's got the liner in it. There's the Gamma Seal lid. Uh, some extra trash bags. Some smaller trash bags in this uh, Ziploc. Some zip ties. Very important item here. I have a pack of 10 3M N95 masks. A very important item. They're sealed. And they'll be in bucket number four, a large one-gallon Ziploc, empty, uh, a good heavy-duty pair of work gloves, uh, adjustable wristband, two microfiber towels. Again, you could use these for multiple duties, as, as, um, also for filtering water out, uh, if you're pulling water out of a lake or something. Uh, some women's products, two bags of women's products. A folding camp shovel and little spike here for digging, burying your waste. I think that's a very important item to have. There's a Mora clipper knife with a neck, some paracord to wear around my neck. There's a redhead uh, bushcraft knife, three inch blade with a leather sheath. You can never have too many cutting tools. Uh, an all around uh, crank radio weather radio, um, I thought it would be important to have a small like one gallon bucket for mixing or for washing or shaving. To have that within the bucket I think is indispensable. My Stanley kit that I did a review on recently right here for cooking or boiling water. GSI Glacier Cup which is a great cup to have and the Stanley lid also fits the glacier cup which is you got a two for one there. The flyweight backpack which I did a video on recently a pair of safety sunglasses a 96 gallon excuse me 96 ounce two gallon sorry water bag that I could carry that's foldable that's labeled and calibrated Carabiner, my Best Glide anodized aluminum survival tin with sealed rubber gasket, sealable clasps, 
to hold the lid on and in this kit I have a compass, some first aid, some sporks, some pencils, some dryer lint, some cordage. Inside this kit also goes this Altoid tin kit with a fire steel, a lighter, um, a can opener, a pencil sharpener for kindling wood. Um, and that all nests away in this tin. And I think that is completes bucket number four. Aside from some assorted bandanas, which I'm going to add, I think they're important to have. I was wanted to reach out and ask a question on this product here, which is Pool Shock. I've been watching a lot of videos on water purification, and this seems to be a very important product for long-term water purification. Now, you noticed I had in one of the buckets the 48-ounce uh, bottle of bleach. But bleached liquid form does not have the shelf life uh, that we would want for disinfecting water, so it would have to be changed out. This powdered form of calcium hypochlorite, you can see this is at least 73% calcium hypochlorite, uh, can be used to making thousands of gallons of water for processing. So this will make your, your stock chlorine solution, and then also a basic pool testing kit that I bought recently that tests the pH and the parts per million of chlorine in your water. I don't know how important this calcium hypochlorite is to put within this kit, but I think I'm going to pack it away as a side kit and take it along with my hygiene, this hygiene kit as well. I just want to figure out the best way to pack it. Because um, you've got to be careful how you store this and what you store this up against. Right now I just have it in a small Tupperware and it's tucked away until I decide what to do with it. So I'd like some feedback from the YouTube community on the calcium hypochlorite. But uh, basically right now that's my hygiene kit. I hope it's, I think it's as complete as I could get it. Uh, but I'd like some feedback on items I should take out or add or maybe add another bucket with a fifth bucket and just pack everything that I need. I was thinking maybe a bigger cook pot, uh, but um, you know I think the basics are covered in this kit. So thanks for joining me. I appreciate your support. Hope I get some good feedback on this. I know there's a lot of preppers out there and people that uh, stress the, the importance of hygiene, especially in a disaster situation. Um, can make the difference between life and death. Uh, Anthony signing off. Take care.